Hey everybody, this is James Pelton. Want to welcome you here to another AMA. Uh, if you're watching this live or you're watching it as a replay, sometimes I forget to welcome you, but if you're watching this as a replay, I appreciate you guys. And uh, please hit the like button as we get started here. Um, we have Robert from uh, Starlink Satellites here today. And we're talking about a new project. We're talking about Diamondback Royalty today. So, Robert, I, I've had you on the channel several times, so maybe we can kind of skip the introduction a little bit. Yeah. Um, but do you want to go ahead and start off by, I think people will want to know, uh, what is Diamondback or DBK? And then kind of how is it related to um, Starlink? You know, I'm, I'm sure we have a lot of people who are from the Starlink project, but can you kind of talk about how they're related? Yeah, of course. So um, thank you for having me uh, back on, JP. Really appreciate it, brother. Um, but yeah, my name is Robert Morgan. And um, and I think Diamondback's going to be one of the biggest things to come for, for multiple years. And, you know, what we've seen with uh, Starlink satellites and the, the LMS niche kind of crumbling down over the past week or so with kind of the market as a whole. Um, we're looking for the best way to ROI our holders because we have to protect our investors and our community. And we think uh, Diamondback presents the opportunity to our community the best since uh, liquidity management systems have taken a tumble like everything else in the market. Okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Because you were kind of uh, you were kind of going the horde direction. But yeah, everything we're just in a very harsh bear market. So and I just want to tell people who are watching to just, you know, stay calm, just kind of roll with the punches. There's not much else you can do. But yeah, we're having a lot of drama with FTX and the, mm -hmm. and the market as a whole. Um, so. Uh, so do you want to maybe explain what DBK is? And I get, I can share my screen or you can share your screen, um, but I'd love to just kind of hear about what it is and how it's maybe protected from these market conditions. Yeah. So listen, it's, it's something that's inflation proof. It's something that's accessible for everyone. Um, it, and it's something it's, it's, we believe it's the first crypto that could go mainstream, right? Um, the first crypto that would actually be usable for business would be inflation proof. You can use USDC or USDT for business, but many countries are trying to escape their inflation and either can't get US dollars or want something better than US dollars. And the rest of non-stable cryptos are just too volatile for business. And Diamondback solves these solutions. So what Diamondback is, known as DBK, it's a stable price payment coin that allows holders to connect payment solutions worldwide. DBK has the same capabilities and reach as USDT, USDC, TUSD, and many other stable coins. The DBK coin will be used as a stable price payment coin on digital currency exchanges and as a stable store of value credit payment vehicle using the benefits of blockchain technology, coupled with the Diamond Trust as a substantiating mechanism for the value of the coin. So in essence, DB coin, DBK coin serves as a transactability bridge between traditional fiat-based payments and emergent blockchain-based payments. DB coin may provide people with a safe, stable alternative to fiat currencies that lose value over time. It also provides an alternative to both proof-of-work and proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies, which are even more volatile than most fiat currencies. But each token is substantiated by a diamond that was approved by the Diamondback Trust model. And I can let me dive into the trust model a little bit here, James. But this is the, probably the, the 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 substance that really is behind Diamondback. So the trust model underpinning the DBK coin involves the the integration of several top tiered relationship components um, that provide the DBK coin purchaser and holders with a level of trust, security, safety, and transparency of the diamonds and the DBK coins being issued, fulfilled, and sold. These are the following relationships are Price Water Coopers. They will be providing advisory service for the business and assurance survivor, uh, assurance services provider. They'll provide an annual audit and verification of the Diamond Reserve Trust. To give you an idea of Price Water Coopers, they have about 300,000 employees. They're rather massive. And then for the grading services, we'll be using the Gemological Institute of America. They will be uh, grading the quality of the individual diamonds placed in the diamond reserves. For the pricing model, we will be using Rappaport on the individual diamonds at the wholesale rates. And then for the insurance of the diamond assets, we will be using Lloyds of London Syndicate Willis Towers Watson. And then for the safeguarding of the diamonds, 
we will be using Brinks Global Services. I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. And then the trustee of the Diamond Reserve Trust will be Winchester Global Trust Limited. So that is what makes up and is really the substance of Diamondback and why it's such a trusted model and why it will be used worldwide in different financial markets all over the world. Okay, very cool. Can I ask how you got hooked up with this project or how did you hear about it? Uh, or, or, yeah, how'd you get hooked up with Diamond Dow and DBK? So how I personally got hooked up with Diamondback is a lot of the businesses I run and, and things I'm a part of are out of Florida. And especially on Brickell Avenue, it's a small place. And one of the LLCs that I, I work with and work for happened to be right across the street from Diamondback. And we were regular attendings to the Brickle Banking Center and kind of cross paths in, in some of our relationships and and DevOps and, and things and kind of cross paths. And, and I really like their vision. And they've been working on this now for five years. And there's been millions and millions of dollars invested in Diamondback. And they might not be known quite yet because they've been, you know, waiting to get everything compliant with, you know, European banks in Dubai, in South America, here in the States before they've been really start pushing marketing. But I have a great relationship with their team and I look forward to, to helping them out. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, and so a uh, few questions. Uh, is So DBK is meant to be a stable coin. Is that correct? Is it, and it's backed by diamonds. Is that kind of the right way to look at it? That's exactly right. Uh, we use the, we use the term substantiated and pretty much it's a, it's a stable price. So it's always one DBK will be one USD, but people who hold diamondbacks will get, uh, dripped rewards because diamonds have always gone up over time for the past 60 years um, because they're held by a very small group of people, especially investment grade quantities. So um, you will get on the on the DAP, on the app, when you hold your diamond back coins, you get dripped rewards over a period and you can see them in live. So that's what hedges against inflation. Okay. Yeah, we don't use that word dripped though on this channel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just oh, kidding. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, so how come diamonds? Again, some people would say that diamonds are not a good asset class. You know, they're the value's inflated, it's a fake mm -hmm. market. How come yeah. uh, why diamonds? So yeah, that's a great question. So trading diamonds has gone on for centuries. Like these gifts of nature are extremely rare in investment grade quantities. While there are billions of dollars worth of rough diamonds mined every year, most people don't know, but most of the diamonds do not meet the criteria for investment grade gemstones. Unlike precious metals, investment grade diamonds are unique assets. In such a way, they are traded, graded, and valued individually. And fortunately enough for us, technological innovation has made the process progressively easier. The result of this has been the slow development of a robust international diamond market. Most of this technology has been focused on identification and, and valuation improvements. What was kind of once an art is now provided through the rigors of scientific exactness, measurement. Um, these huge advances are very beneficial to the standardization of the international diamond market. And diamonds are, you know, just like gold or silver have always been considered valuable, but diamonds historical lack of fungibility has hindered the diamond industry from taking advantage of the leverage tools of the financial markets. So, you know, therefore, it, there is no financialized commodity market per se for diamonds. Instead, they are sold individually or in lots, but still as listed and described as individual unique units. And the Diamondback Company, by using today's, um, you know, blockchain technology, with the development of the diamond reserve and trust model that I just stated can successively resolve these problems. Um, hence the DBK coin may be the ultimate solution to the challenges faced by diamonds as a financialized commodity. And also JP, I wanna hit on this point too. Banks, massive institutional players like banks like JP Morgan, Chase, you name them, have been fined billions for manipulating gold and silver prices. This cannot be done with diamonds the same way it is to gold and silver. That makes diamonds a far superior asset when you buy on the high end. The manipulation of the price of diamonds so far in history has gone one way, and that's only caused the price to go up because it's held by a small group of people 
and investment grade quantities. Okay. Can, so can I ask again, some people are skeptical. You know, the first thing it says is, you know, is it possible to make 25, 250 or 2,500 X on a stable coin? Um, do you want to talk about how that works or where does the revenue for that come from? Um, and just talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I can, I can talk about where kind of where the sales comes from, right? Since that's a big part, like kind of where the revenue of who will be buying a, the Diamondback coin, you know, it's a, it's a stable coin. So it'll have the same reach as, you know, USDT, USDC, TUSD, who do billions of volume daily, right? Massive volume. And they're not backed by anything. They're, they're not very, besides USDC, they're, most stable coins are not compliant. So um, Diamondback has been around for five years now, has relationships all over the world. Um, you can check them out and um, their connections, their founders, their advisors at diamondback.io. But Diamondback has connections in the United Arab of Emirates, Europe, and South America to sell DBK coins to high net worth individuals who have been waiting to partake in the digital currency world, but we're looking for the right on wrap and are looking longer term, right? Um, a lot of these cryptos are too volatile, they're not backed by anything. And we've seen a lot of people on the sidelines, institutional players royal families, things of that nature, wanting to partake in this in this new digital currency um, trend. And most decentralized finance life cycles are, are not long enough for serious investors to participate in them. The projects usually do not last long enough to attract institutional buyers, but Diamondback is, is much, much, much bigger than all that. So to first, to, the first avenue is Diamondback is compliant with all the banks in Europe, which means Diamondback can be purchase, purchasable directly from bank accounts starting in the first quarter of 2023. For example, our merchant program partnership with a billion dollar platform, choice.com. Choice has about 500,000 active users and millions of dollars worth of volume every day. We will be listed as Choice's preferred stablecoin where anyone in Europe can buy DBK directly with their bank account. And then also, Second is Diamondback's Express Club will be a closed loop membership environment. All members agree and accept to use the DBK coin as a proprietary payment mechanism, fulfilling uh, peer to pair um, customer to business and business to business within their community. And then the third one we have too is, is an interesting one and it has to do with gift cards and it's kind of a voucher program. Uh, Diamondback Club gift cards and vouchers that issue DBK coin credits can be applied as respective credits or payments to members, merchants, vendors, and companies' accounts with the club's ecosystem. Um, our principals know the people that handle gift cards for all 7-Eleven's convenience stores. Um, we will be selling gift card vouchers that issues credits that can be exchanged for DBK coins. This eventual program will be geared to the Asian market for their gift giving practice for the Lunar New Year. And then for our fourth sales revenue right off the bat, we'll be um, listed on some centralized exchanges, giving us direct access to markets with billions and billions of dollars in capital. We cannot name the exchanges quite yet until we're listed onto them due to confidential agreements. It's not FTX, right? Uh, no, I can I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just making sure. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So what is the estimated APY then? Like, again, we're talking about a stable coin backed by diamonds. Um, what kind of return are you, would you expect and what kind of return? Um, well, maybe after that, we'll talk about how people can get involved and what kind of ROI they, sh they could expect. Yeah. So, so just the holding the diamond back coin, right? We don't expect people here to really, you know, they can buy the stable coin if they want, right? But uh, they want bigger gains than that, right? If you hold the Diamondback coin as a stable coin, you can get 5 to 20% APY, right? Um, hedging against inflation, uh, the price of diamonds going up. And especially since everyone's printing so much money, um, diamonds and investment grade quantities are only going up more and more and more, right? Since inflation rises. Um, but really, the what we want to kind of give the people an opportunity to partake in is is the the royalty program right um which we think is is a great idea for people to get in the door um on the first steps and, and be part of something huge humongous and um for the next 25 years if you want me to dive into that now yeah let's go ahead and dive into that so so again there's the stable coin which people are going to be using but then there's also a way to profit by getting the royalty tokens correct yeah do you want to talk about those yeah, of course. So when 
you know, I got presented with the opportunity. I, I talked to the founders and talked to the team and, and I, we weren't really sure we were going to get this opportunity to share this with you, JP, and, and your audience because there's so much off-chain interest, private equity, family offices who want to buy lots and lots of the royalties. There's already been millions invested, but you know, in, in real life, that takes a lot of time. It's a lot of paperwork. That's a lot of things to go through. But here in crypto, right, it's everything's instant, right? It's one day is one year. So the royalty token program is um, royalty token buyers get a percentage of gross revenue, a percentage of every token sold for the first 25 years of the project. And that the royalty token holders can elect to receive their monthly royalty payouts in either crypto or fiat. So let me explain, explain in layman terms. You participate in the royalty program, you get a percentage of the gross revenue of the Diamondback coin being bought. So one royalty token is one USD. Minimum buy-in is $500. And one unit is $20,000, which is um, one unit is $20,000, which is 20,000 royalty tokens. And so the math of the payout is one unit, 20,000 royalty tokens, which is $20,000 is 100 million tokens sold that's a 5000 usd payout a billion tokens sold that's a 50000 dollar payout so forth and so forth but we want to really hit on the fact that since we're going to be in such diamondbacks and be such profit and such margin that the first the first 100000 royalty tokens sold were roi from the first million dollars worth of volume in the diamondback coin so really think about it like this you buy a royalty program token program for usdt they do billions and billions of dollars every day right imagine getting paid out from their volume straight off the top royalty token holders get five percent of gross revenue and here we want to roi our early investors as soon as possible right through the through the royalty program so 100,000 royalty tokens sold those holders were roi within the first million dollars of volume and then from then on, they'll be in straight profit, which is, I mean, mean coins do that nowadays. We're in a bear market. So it's it's really a, it's it's a win-win, super advantageous. Yeah. So is there a, is there like a buy sell tax or is the price of one token not quite, uh, I, where does that, where does that yield come from uh, that's being paid out to people? That yield is coming based off of the, our, our business model that's actually being patented right now by our attorneys. Um, let me see. I, I can I can give a little hint, but because we're we're the diamonds we buy is not necessarily one USD for for one dollars worth of diamonds because we're we can buy them uncut and then cut them right, making them more valuable. So there we have we have our ways that's being patented right now. Um, that I'm not sure I'm, I can dive too deep into, but there's okay, that so margin off the top. There's that margin off the top of buying the diamonds um, from the mining companies and cutting them and and getting them graded and and that whole trust model. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so that makes sense. So there's a little bit of a margin there mm -hmm. um, from getting the diamonds and getting them into the the stable coin backing. Yeah, um, and so that extra that margin there is what's being paid out to the royalty holders. So that kind of right. makes sense. Yeah. Um, is there, is there, uh, do you guys have like legal audits or anything like that, um, that you've yes. seen so far or is that upcoming? Yes, we do. We have, uh, we have, we have quite a bit of that. We, that was, uh, that's the one, that's one of the big, uh, you know, advantages and leverages we have is, is we're compliant, right? And we have all the backing of all these huge companies, you know, PricewaterCoopers, you know, uh, Lloyds of London and we've, uh, Spent a lot of time becoming compliant in Europe. Now we are right working on the final integration, and uh, uh, hoping to be launched very soon. And then we are working here in the states as well, getting our patent pending, and then working further down the line with uh, SCC and CFTC. And we look forward to um, getting compliant with them as well. Okay, and how do you plan? I think the hardest part with stable coins is mm -hmm. getting people to use them. So mm -hmm. what are, what's kind of the plans for getting people to, you know, why would you use this instead of USDT or BUSD? 
Yeah. Um, and how are you going to get usage? Uh, that's that's a great question, and, and I think it comes back to to the main basis of what Diamondback is, right? You know, with USDT, you're not backed by anything, and and you know they they've had you know when there's when there's smoke, there's usually fire, and they kind of have a you know kind of a shady background and things like that. But regardless, they don't hedge against inflation, right? You can hold USDT, but there's no difference between holding USDT and holding USD. It's absolutely none, right? You're still um, susceptible to inflation, but with Diamondback, right? with it being substantiated by something that's only gone up over time and you see interest coming in, the rewards coming in, right? That hedges against inflation. It's um, it's quite advantageous, right? Because it's um, a safe, secure, transparent. It's not volatile and it's backed by something that constantly drips rewards um, due to the investment grade quantities of diamonds that have always gone up. So, and it, and like I said, it's compliant, right? We don't know what's going to happen with these other stable coins that aren't. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um. And do you expect the current market conditions to affect anything that's going on, or is does that make anybody nervous, or kind of what's thoughts on uh, the bear market here? We actually think this is the perfect storm for us. We think this is excellent, right? Because we've seen so much. There's so much cash on the sidelines that's waiting to get into the game. Right, and they want to partake in something great, and they want to on ramp their fiat into crypto and, and digital currencies. And we think Diamondback provides that solution. Right, it's really um, it's in real life traditional finance and kind of blockchain technology kind of combined into one with the backing and, and the founders and who we have listed and, and how the products and services work with Diamondback and kind of the the avenues of where the sales would go from and the, the exposure to the, the massive markets we have in the Middle East, South America. And we've had quite of off-chain interest already. So, you know, selling, you know, Diamondback coins will, will not be an issue. Okay. All right. Very cool. And then uh, I think inevitably people are going to kind of ask, so for, for Starlink satellite holders, um, are they automatically in or do they need to do something or, or kind of what's uh, what's the status there? So the Starlink satellite. So we will be looking to um, ROI them as soon as possible. We're getting payouts in BUSD and then we'll give them um, some exposure to this as well if, if they want to. And then we can ROI them from this because really we had to pivot, right? Or just, I think, pause trading a few days ago. And so it's been... It's been quite hectic, as you've seen all over, right? Even in, in centralized finance with Sam Bankman <laughs> and now with the DeFi and the smallest players. Um, so, yeah, like our job is to ROI them, you know, protect them. And you know, they've been great so far. And, and unfortunately, the market just took a bad turn. And now we have to pivot. You know, we have to be flexible. Yes, absolutely. So what would you say is the biggest risk to the project, to potential investors in Diamondback? Ooh, the biggest risk. That's a that's a tough one. I like yeah. to throw that one out there, you know. It's a tough one. You know? It's a, it's a little bit of a curveball. Um, the biggest risk, you know, it, it I think it would just be as a as a as a market as a whole, right? Because everyone just stops using crypto and something catastrophic happens. But really individually when it comes to the diamondback company. Since it's compliant, has all the legal in line, has the fundamental in line, the technical, it's audited, it's fully doxxed, and it's really crossed all the boxes. It would have to take a catastrophic market downturn for people not to use Diamondback, which I don't think we are the year. We're, we're not even close to being there yet. And I don't think we will be because there's so much casting on the sideline. Institutional players want to get in. Um, people want to hedge against inflation. I mean, I wouldn't say it's it's technically a risk. I just say it would be a a minimal setback to a very long, great project. Okay. All right. No, that's a a good answer. Um, so, do you want to talk about how people can get involved? So, if they again hear this, they want to get involved in the royalty sale. Um, we do have yes. some more questions to go through, but can you kind of talk about what the offering is? Yeah. So they can head to uh, dbk dot finance. Um, it's com the DAP is compatible on. Uh, the Binance Smart Chain and the Ethereum virtual machine. You can buy with 500 BUSD or 500 USDC. 
uh, that's a minimum buy-in, but you can go there now and, and partake. And if you're one of the first 100,000 um, token buyers, then your ROI in the first million dollars worth of sale for the Diamondback coin. Um, and that's how you partake. And this is, we wanted to unwrap this because this is a much easier and quicker way. And, and we want to really have the people that supported us, you, James, and, and everyone in the, that we came across and give them the, the access to partake in this great opportunity. And with the off-chain interest, you know, coming in, we wanted to make sure you, you guys got in first um, before the private equity and the family offices started started really going ham as that takes some time. Okay. And as the stable coin is minted, is it going to be like as diamonds come in, then more coins are minted or are they waiting to see how much volume there is? Then, then they're buying the diamonds or how does, do you got to know how that process works? Yeah, I, I do. I can actually shed a little bit of light of that. So we already have $2 million worth of, of diamonds, millions of dollars worth of diamonds in the, in the, in the trust model and the reserve. And then um, as sales come in, right, we can we can use the fees from um, to buy diamonds and, and back them. Um, and the, the the secret sauce is here is kind of why we're able to have that margin with royalty holders is because we're buying these diamonds, these investment grade quantities in large bulks. So when you buy them in millions and millions of dollars worth of bulk. They're not one USD to you know to one diamond. There's that little bit of margin, and that margin is what we use to pay out these holders, the royalty token holders. Okay, and uh, what's the money from the royalty sale going to be used for? It looks like yeah, looking for 50 k here. Mm -hmm. um, what's that money needed for, and what's that going to kind of be used for? It's it's really going to use to to scale this process much quicker, right? That's going to be go straight to the company and that company's gonna use it for marketing, marketing in Europe, marketing in Dubai, where there's a ton of money, trillions of dollars of money, South America, and something we can we can use to really scale and get the word out for Diamondback as we want to attack both traditional finance and also non-traditional finance such as DeFi, crypto, and then you know once we get that amount of liquidity that we need, then bigger players start coming in, institutions, countries, and, and things we're, we're already in talks about. But the liquidity has to be there first. So this just kind of scales us even quicker, and it's a great chance for um, our friends and you guys to, to partake in it and get in, the, get, in, get in there first. Okay. All right. And then uh, people are asking, are these diamonds ethically sourced? Ethically sourced? Was, yes, uh, like uh, I know, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Blood Diamond, but again, for us in the U.S., that's kind of all we know about the diamond trade and things like that. So, um, just wanting to know if the, you know, is there a, somebody asks, is there crime uh, going on to mine these diamonds <laughs> or do you know anything about the mines? No, so we have a really close relationship with two of the largest mining companies here in the states, and that's who we buy directly from. So, okay, uh, all right, no, I think yeah. that helps with that um let's see what percentage of the stablecoin space do you expect to capture in the first two years oh that's a good question we think diamondback can be bigger right you know over a certain time span bigger than the whole stablecoin market um in the first two years i think being 50 25 to 50 percent of it it will be absolutely no problem right um being substantiated being legally compliant having these type of connections, um, having, you know, use of funds and everything, public docs, funds, multi-sig, everything what people want. People want to see balance sheets. People want to see where the money's going, right? Uh, that's what these centralized, centralized exchanges who are becoming insolvent should do. That's what Celsius should have done, right? Um, we're taking a really tra traditional approach to this and, and really want to change the way people look at uh, digital currencies. Okay, and then what reassurances can you give to potential early investors that they won't get rugged? Again, sorry that we have to ask, but everything collapsing around, just a question that comes up. <laughs> you know, I, I totally understand it too. I as well from Celsius, FTX. I'm going to be asking everyone. I might call Satoshi, ask him, hey, listen, please don't rug. So <laughs> right? I, totally, I totally understand, but no. The, the company um, totally doxed. 
100% audited, um, legally compliant. It's been around for five years. You can already millions and millions and millions of dollars invested. The money you can see is already going straight to the company. Um, so yeah, definitely no. Yeah. Okay. Do you have Do you have any info on the doc? Is this the Diamond Dow team? And do you have info on the on the doc's status there or anything like that? The which one are you? Which one are you talking? Uh, about? Just uh, just wondering if you have that docs info on the. Oh yeah, yeah. So go go to uh, uh, diamondback.io. All right, let's go yeah. here. And then um, you should come up and then scroll down. You see the whole team's docs, the advisors, the founders. Oh, perfect, perfect. And yeah, this is what I was looking for. Yeah, it's a um, great team. You can see our trust model. You can see our roadmap, how long we've been building for. It's been now five years. You see the services we use and um, yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah, and you can go look into some of these people. Um, do you know any of these people or what's kind of your contact point on the team? Yeah, so um, the contact point as a team is 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 the is uh, is William and, and, and Greta, right? Um, they've been um, in Europe for some time now, um, you know, working with the banks, becoming compliant over there. And as you can see too, we have a great list of advisors if you look any of those guys up, especially even Aaron Etra, you see some of the top of, of big players involved. Um, and, and it's quite surprising that we, we got these these big players and people who, like I said, people want to partake in this digital currency niche, right? And they're looking for something to use as an on-ramp and Diamondback is that thing. Okay. All right. And then um, let's see, how come you went the token route instead of an NFT? Yeah, that's a good question. We we did think it, we did think about the NFT route, right? Um, we did think about the NFT route, but we think it'd be it's it's easier, you know. We think for for token holders and and with NFTs, it just I think there's there's too much going on. We wanted to make it as simple as possible. You know, there's there's no either way it would have worked. Um, but tokens were were, were were a much easier route. Okay. Nope, that's that is a uh, fine, fine question. Okay, so if again, if people want to get involved, is what you're looking for right now is just this royalty sale here at dbk dbk.finance? Is that kind of the best way for people to get involved? Yeah, and and if you guys have any further questions, you know, feel free to uh to join our Discord too. I think that's at Diamondback Royalties, you know, our Twitter as well. Um, yeah, you know, listen, we. We wanted to give you guys these opportunities. And, and like we said, the first 1,000 uh, royalty tokens uh, holders, you know, the first 100,000 USD that come in, those people who hold those tokens will ROI immediately when uh, we sell 1 million DBK coins. And that could happen within the first day we launch. <laughs> you know, we see meme coins do millions of dollars of volume in the first days, right? And then, um, so it's it's a great opportunity to partake in. We give we want to give someone a, an opportunity to take part in something great, big, feel like they join something humongous, right? Since it is right, Diamondbacks massive, and um, we really haven't seen a project quite like this. So I wanted to expose it to all you guys. Okay. Do you think there's any chance of having William or Peter or Ingrid on for an AMA at some point? You know, um, I can definitely talk to them about it, and I'm 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 glad they I I, I could see if they uh if they carve out some time for you, JP. That's right. I forgot uh, last time we looked, he went to Creighton University, which is again in Nebraska, so just yeah. down the down the street from me. So that'd be pretty uh that'd be pretty cool to talk to him about his experience there. So yeah, let me let me know. I think that would be great. I think people would really uh, appreciate that, and just you know, kind of give give some faces, you know, to what's going on here. So yeah, absolutely. Um, what happens if they don't sell 1 million? What happens to investors? Um, well, there was still technically almost ROI, but if we don't sell 1 million, then um, crypto as a whole is a fail because I mean, we, this is massive. We'll, we'll say, I think they could sell one million within a day, two days, three days, easily, right? Um, but that's a that's a total project fail if they don't sell one million, right? DBK coins within 
the time span and exposure we have and the opportunities for people to partake in the ecosystem. Um, I don't even think that's a, you know, a question we're really asking over here. If the question is, is, is how fast can we get to 10 billion? How fast can we get to 5 billion? You know, we're laying down best. We think we can get to 1 billion within a year. Um, that's, that's not out of the question at all. USDT, USDC do hundreds of billions of volume daily money flowing in and out. Right. People want, and that's, that's, I understand a lot of that's kind of like funny money, right? Trading wise and things like that. But there's trillions of dollars sitting on the sideline, ready to buy something that hedges against inflation, that's proved, that's compliant, um, that's easy, that's a closed looped environment. And, and Diamondback provides all the solutions to, to large, large players. Hey, and so if people want more info, you mentioned this just a little bit ago, but just concise answer here. Uh, I can so I can put the chapters here. Yeah. Um, but what uh, what's the best way for people to get their ans- questions answered if they have more questions that they'd like to go ask? They can they can head to the to the Discord. So that's a uh, uh, Diamondback Royalties. That's the that's the name of the Discord. Um, uh, I can send you a link, JP, if you don't have a link. But um, okay, I then, think I found it. Okay, cool. So I'll Perfect. put that down in the comments below and I'll put that in the description too. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are gonna have lots of lots of questions as this is something kind of revolutionary, kind of new, right? We haven't seen this. This is not something you know you see every day. This is not your your LMS system, this is not your horde pitch, right? This is like massive. Um and, and we understand it. it. It takes a lot of time for uh, people to grasp. It took a lot of time for me to grasp. I'm like, what is this, right? Years ago, I'm like this is something I <laughs> I would never have thought of, let alone, you know, thought I'd be speaking about it. So it's it's quite great how they've scaled over five years and how massive they've become. It's only a, a a peak of what's about to come within the next year. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to kind of keep an eye on it as things go forward. So yeah, definitely very different than a lot of the stuff that we see. Um, so I'm excited to see it going forward. Well, I appreciate you sharing this with us. Do you have anything else that you want to share? Do you feel like we kind of got through everything? I, I feel like we got through. I expect all of you guys to have lots of questions. So make sure you join the Discord and, and ask away. And we'll feel free more than uh, to answer all the questions, you know, comments, concerns, concerns thoughts. Um, but yeah, if you guys want any, for, any more information, you want to check out the founders, um, go check out diamondback.io. You can look through all of our service providers, our partners, our trust model our roadmap of what we've got built so far. And, you know, you can check out our advisors as well. And then um, make sure you visit dbk.finance and and partake in this great opportunity. And if you have any questions about that, you can ask in the Discord. And I look forward to hearing from all you guys. It should be fun. Okay, very cool. Yep, so again, um, I put a link to the Discord. I put a link to the Telegram so you can ask questions in there. Um, and then here's the website to start on the royalty sale. Um, I also posted a link to the light paper uh, if you guys want to kind of take a look in there as well. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you, Robert, for hopping on here. I appreciate you uh, kind of talking through everything. Of course, JP. Thank you so much for having me on, buddy. Yep, you're you're awesome. And audience, appreciate you guys. Please do hit like on your way out and feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like. You can ask me. Um, But again, if you ask me a question, I'll probably go to the Discord and ask them because I don't know. So (laughs) if you want to skip that step, then uh, you can just go to the Discord. But I'm happy to answer any questions and talk through things uh, as much as you'd like. So thank you, audience. And thank you, Robert. I feel uh, thanks for coming on again. I've had you several times. Appreciate it each time. But yeah, just keep, uh, keep building, keep pivoting, and let me know if I can help with anything. Awesome. Thank you so much, James. Really appreciate it, brother. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Let's have uh, everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.